So, guys, we're embarking on a little bit of a project alongside Johnson Gilpin. So, Rob's here. Um, and we all know Rob. Rob and I met originally when we started off the 9000 series in Germany. Yeah. We all know Gatham. He's sort of a part of our furniture now, too. But um, these guys are literally going to show us the process of ordering their demonstration machine for next year. So what's involved? This is kind of the moment where we're going to decide what machine they're bringing in. Typically, what machines do you run as demos? Like, are you... Because you've well, had some very animated conversations about this. <laughs> I have a very set belief in what a demo machine should be. Mm -hmm. What... Are you, you know, are you buying what you can say? Are you because obviously you're buying this, right? <laughs> yeah, no, this is a sale for John Deere. Hopefully, more than one sale. You know, that's also what you want a demo machine. You want a demo to guys and, and do. We don't want to get one machine into a dealer and the money to sell one. You know, we want them to sell multiple machines, and that's what it's about, really. For you, all you need now is a cup of tea and you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Any word of the tea, hey? <laughs> Hello, Alahi. You nearly think camera magic was at play here. <laughs> Hey, you should have brought me my new holding mug. That, that broke. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> accidentally <laughs> broke. <laughs> it didn't <laughs> handle. That was didn't not here. I'm sorry, but I was leaking. <laughs> <laughs> we make sure nothing runs like a deer, huh? That's Thank that. you. Thanks, <laughs> You two guys have your laptop now, user modern. I am literally trolling through the two brochures now. So, in my eyes, I would be going either with an 8-1, which is your baby, or I'd be going with a 9-9, which is your absolute daddy. 8-1, 9 litre engine, which is an absolute mighty performing engine, 400 and something horse, not a machine that's going to have to do 1,000 a day, which can't be. Mm -hmm. And then I just think, daddy, V12, labour, just get people in it that are blown away the complete absolute. So. Which one of them two are we going for? There are several motivators as yeah. a dealer. So, yes, it would be great to go out with an 8-1 and, you know, go out and say... Look so you kind of agree look with me on that one? Oh, yeah, I do agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it would be nice to go out with that mm. and say, look, this is our baby machine. Look what it can do. But ultimately, we have a, you know, a very small customer base to, to buy that machine at the end. When it comes to the 9.9, which is the other end of the spectrum, we would sell those the most, like that would be our sort of number one machine here. Do you think 9.9 is not a smart move for a demo? Not, not for a demo. I'm not saying it's an absolute no, because we have done it and we, we have sold it. We often find that sort of middle ground, mid-range machine is a better machine for us. The amount of high horsepower machines sold here on this island, yeah. in comparison to what the textbook says you really need for the work that's being done. <laughs> I've interacted with some of the guys from, from the factory and all, all over the years and from, from John Deere and there's nearly, when they come into those positions, there's nearly an element of surprise that like Ireland, this wee small country, like, and, you know, we, we've we had some of the highest hours in the world in this country on machines in, in short spaces of time. So I think they, they get genuinely surprised about um, what these machines are doing. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's even worse shocking, Rob. Would it be fair to say when they come and actually see what they're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see the conditions they're working in, Thanks. see the, the crops they're having to deal with, the ground conditions, the weather, you know, and it's only then that I suppose everyone gets a full picture of, you know, yeah. why these machines are required. So you're not going to order an 8-1s, what you're telling me? I don't think an 8-1s for us, no. From well, my point of view, you know, we've got to look at the market. Where Where is there a sensible size machine for what people are buying in the marketplace and, and, and although it would be lovely to get one out and have a go with one and you know it is a super little machine and there is a home for them as Gethin mentioned you know the number of customers for that size machine is pretty small so I'd love to put my 350 and JF against it <laughs> be a good day's out with nothing else that was a good try <laughs> nothing else could be arranged if you're staying away from the flagship 99 my assumption is that keeps you away from the 98 for the same reasons, yeah. pasta. Yeah, it is. So that leaves you with your 
the rest of your 8000 series, which is your 13 and a half litre engine, which is taking you from 465 max rated up to 625 at your 86. They're all standard body machines. That's that's, right. that's what the 8000 now stands for. Yep. pretty much. So you're going to be one of them with the new styling, the black panels, mm -hmm. or you're left with you've you've only three other options then. 9.5, 9, 9.6, 9.7 with this new, new engine. Well, for me, as, as you know, like, I'm excited about the 9.5, and we have we have these guys sold, sold one, this Harvest had it out running. Run seen know, it, seen it, seen it. Going well, great yeah. machine, and it, I get really excited about it. Um, and like well, that's what I think, you know, it's good demand for the market. It's a nice size machine. Um, the characteristics of the engine, the power, the power motion plus, as you. I was excited say. that when we were doing that, you know, with. The, the, the forager launch, I yeah, genuinely. Yeah. It drives very similar to the 24 litre. You know, what was your demo last year? 9.7. She was a V12. Mm -hmm. Same labour as Res, the 9.7 now. Yep. Is the 18 you're, litre. Your reading's getting better. 18X. Eight glasses. 825 horsepower. That's more horsepower than the old 9.7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're telling me, ah, ah guys, you, do you believe what you're writing the books? You're telling oh. me that your new 9.7 with an 18 litre straight six engine is going to perform better than the outgoing V12 with an extra 6.2 litres of displacement. That was what one of the focus the engineers were giving, you know, if, if we're going to be putting that engine in that machine, mm -hmm. it needs to be at a minimum the same, but ultimately better than the V12 97. So we haven't had one here in Ireland yet. So we haven't seen it here in our conditions, to be fair. But from what I'm told from my colleagues, she goes well. Mm -hmm. You don't want to sell the big one because you're already the master at selling them. Mm -hmm. You want to see an 18 litre for demo with yep. no one blue yep. and sell that as one of your main advantages. Yep. So that means this is a three choice program. Yep. Where do we go for the the low end, the middle end, or the high end? I think is the decision we have to make. I think we're middle's out, because that's just pointless. Why? Statistically and go for why? go for statistics and probability. It, why is it pointless? Sir? Hold on a minute here. I'm not saying don't buy an nine six. Mm -hmm. I'm saying for the point and purpose of a demo machine, on paper, the nine six is out. Because your nine five is too close. And then your 97 steps it up a good bit. Hmm. On paper, statistically. Yeah, you're 50 horsepower, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Plus, they only do 7 tens. They only do 7 10 tires in 9 sixes, and I don't like that. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they they do it for certain people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like for the, for the whole country, the 9 6 is probably the most popular model. You know, yeah. if I look at my whole area, 9 6 historically. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't offer this engine in the 9.7 to It is a different machine. It is a different machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you only had the two. Yeah, but you have to remember customer People perception. People were buying the biggest. Customer perception too comes into this. Yeah. Like if something, if a, if a forager man sees something with a five in that four digit number, he's automatically going to think, oh, is that a new 8.5, which is an hour body 13.5 litre engine. That's our so job to make sure it, we educate them, obviously. It, it does come down, there's so, so many components to making these decisions that put yourself in a customer's shoes, right? And you're looking at that brochure, which you're doing. I right? am, I yeah. genuinely am, yeah. And you're, you take the 9.7 out of it, because that wasn't available, right? Yeah. And you're saying, well, why would I buy a 9.5 when I could buy a 9.6? Because it's, you know, that's too No, I, I wouldn't buy the 9.6 personally looking at this brochure. Personally, I'd buy either the 9.5 or the 9.7. Take seven. the 9.7 out of it, right? I'd buy the 9.5 and put a stain bar on it. Shh. Be samples. Don't even talk to me. You're in it and the team better be good. Here, listen. <laughs> listen. Stain these guys, here. these guys, these guys can say what they like. At least I'm keeping it real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appar apparently. After uh, the first year. <laughs> <laughs> Second year on engine. Two year engine warranty. <laughs> apparently, stain bar don't make uh, products for this engine, so. No, we're just getting good at not telling the dealers that. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy the 9.5 personally. And my wee mate has one coming 
This next year, he's dealing on it at the minute, and I'm really, really, I think really. He knows it, yeah. He's working on it. Hey. We're just mates. He's and knows mate. moves. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. But he's buying it off the other dealer, so nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, but from what I hear in the Great Vine, that could be changing too. Ask him who started them in Harvesters. Anyway, I, I think the the Noad Blue, all of that's an absolute no-brainer. And like you're getting 825 horsepower with Noad Blue. Yeah. How far away is that from the old 88 really? It's there. 15, 20 horse. Yeah. It's... Yeah. New headers coming on it. Maybe. We can, we can order whatever header, 639 yeah. premium header or 30R. If we get this ordered, it'll be with a 30R. It's, it's practically, you know, a maintenance-free header, apart from the tides. Yeah. I, I mean that. It is, yeah. And we all know different it's... conditions. You can go out in rough conditions, different conditions, and, yeah. and eat off a few times. Mm -hmm. But there aren't been that many of them out now on them 30Rs no, that's too, been floating no, about. Too, I know they've been kind of limited production build to yeah, the fair, point. Yeah. Was the guy said to Johannes when I was first at the factory, and that the Irish guys wanted more times, and I was like, my point is, if I lay down in the ground, would four people lift me easier or six? Yeah. <laughs> that was the analogy, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we putting on this nine seven? Look, I think the first thing you know we're we're addressed with here is, do we put harvest lab on this? Yes. Or not? Uh, Essential. What do you, what do you know about Essential. harvest lab? I'll tell you what I know about Harvest Lab. You want to rewind back a few years to uh -huh. before grass men existed. Uh -huh. Do you know what I did every winter? I tramped up and down silage pits with a core. I cored out samples of silage. I sent them off to the lab. I got them analysed. I then drew on a graph page all my wee squares and my angles, the length of the pit, the width of the pit, the angle up the eye rack and how many bays. And then I calculated out and I told the guy, roughly based on the dry matter how many tons of silage he had in that pit then we put together a plan for feeding his cows we put together a plan for feeding the cows based on the tons of dry matter that he had in there the analysis that i had got from my core and that harvest lab can practically now i'm not saying you won't need to take a few samples whenever you're feeding through because when you put on certain additives they can attack the cellulose fibers the hemicellulose fibers they can keep eating the pit and it can change from the moment that it goes through the harvester but you can give that farmer that customer a piece of paper that tells him how many tons of dry matter roughly what me he's looking at roughly what he's got in that pit bingo bango and he can start his planning more than just video cameras and uh, tractors to this boy. I yeah. thought before that you sold calf nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you any idea how horrible it is climbing up silage pits with a core sample in the dead of winter? <laughs> I feel quite strong about this. I can see well, you dancing <laughs> through the tires. Fair play. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't stand anywhere but the tires. <laughs> <laughs> There's the odd wee holes left by me, but hopefully, hopefully the farmer blamed the rats. And I mean genuinely, hand in my heart, that, that's something I want to do. And, and if you, whatever you order, bring it in my harvest lab. I am sure it's flipping expensive, but bring it in my harvest lab. I want to complete a pit with everything that that machine can do and see the print out. And I want to reach it to the farmer and talk him through it. And I seen it when we were out in Germany doing the tractor launch, when we went to the... You met Alex? Yeah, we did the, the contract and like, that was life for them guys. They, they, they sent analysis through after each field. No, hey look, I'm with you, technology, that's what we're about as well. You know, it is a great, great system as well. And you do have units out, Gethin, and... We, we do, like I think we, we have championed this from very early on here at Johnson Gilpin. What drum do we run? That is a minefield. Yeah, that breaks it down into full set, half set, three quarter set. Do you think biogas, this machine, what's your thoughts there, Gavin? Um, I think potentially we, rather than solely targeting biogas, we need to be able to target biogas, large contractors, mid, mid sized contractors. So we, we need, I think if we're ordering a demo, it needs to be something that's fairly, fairly flexible, but we need to be able to go and chop 
short and demonstrate our uh, top quality, you know, if needs be. We well, need 56 or 64 then. Yeah, I think I would go with 64. All the way up? Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. can still run that machine with a half set and we can chop from uh, 8 mil up 6 mil. Mm -hmm. 8 mil, I think it is. Up, yeah. well, you can go from up, six up to 32. You can still, you well, you can you can go from you can go from six mil actually at That's a half tough. set based on the book. On the full set of 64, you can get it right down to three. Yeah. And that's at 1170 RPM. Mm. 1350. Cut yeah, so we'll no, no, that's no. on that one. 11 cent, 1350, still three. Mm. Yeah, because we, we, we keep the range the same, we actually change the feed roll speed accordingly. But 56 or 64 would get you away really and truly, wouldn't yeah. it? You yeah. think, but stay away from, because the 40 and the 48 just can't get it down short enough. 9000 series we started fitting, kitting them out with 64 now, and we, we just find they seem to run sweeter for us. You know, and most of the guys are running them most of the time with half set, and it seems to be a sweet spot for them. Right, what box are you taking? We right, can, not for uh, talking. Decisions. Well. You've said 56 or 64. You're a step ahead, we were still at the harvest lab. Ah, oh, we'd know that was ticked. Yeah, was right. <laughs> we did Don Giff and catch up, son. <laughs> <laughs> too, too much yeah, time thinking. You're too, you're too far ahead. Do you, do you need auto track in this thing? I mean, is that something we you think we as dealers should be considering? Like, we can cut our machine out with, with full auto steer. Well, that, that comes range. back to what the knife drum that we're putting in. Yeah, if you're well, that is because if you're going to go with that big knife and you're thinking biogas, once you introduce the thought of biogas into it, you're automatically starting to think maize, yeah. whole crop, yeah. a different yeah. amplitude of things going on here. So That's therefore, right. it's essential. Yeah. So yeah. tick that box yeah. too. What the man wants, the man will get. We've got the different screen configurations. We can do our standard seven-inch display. We can do it with a secondary 4640 display, which is similar to the unit you'd have in your 350. Mm -hmm. We can do 10.5 inch, 10.5, 10 10 inch display anyway. 10 display on 2630 on the armrest, plus another one on, on the side rail. So there's different configurations. If you're going for Harvest Lab, you need to go for 4640. Yeah. I suppose you just want a bog standard seat, yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm just assuming like you're a Northampton man, like you're miserable. <laughs> but I'm not so, buying it. You're demoing yeah. this to sell this to someone yeah, with well, money. Well, well, I was going to try and sell it to you at the end, but there is a basic seat, which we never ever sell. But most of them we, we do order with a premium seat. There is the option of a leather seat. We do, with, we're, I think we sold one this year, maybe with leather seat. Mm. Yeah, no, the ordinary, ordinary seat's fine, yeah. Ordinary the good seat, but yeah. It's a good seat. And sure, if you want leather, you just go to your wee boy in Balamina there and he'll put leather on it. Well, you'll hardly want a ready winner either, Probably would you? cheap. No. <laughs> no. Oh. I'll stick no. a ready one, sir. No, really, really. Well, this engine's as good as you boys say it is. What Seriously, is this the level you have to go to? Like, you have yeah, to yeah. remember to tick a box for a radio. Yeah. Yeah, we have different options there. Oh. Well, electric mirrors or manual? <laughs> Which one's the cheapest one you hear? Well, you could, you could save yourself <laughs> 400 quid, like. Seriously? Yeah. I think you're a fool if you don't put electric mirrors on. Imagine tramping out over that thing to adjust your lens every time you get down in our lane. Different light configurations. We can have standard halogen lights um, or we can have LED. Now, sure. you're looking at me like, why would I not select LED? But we have customers that will not buy LED because they blind the drivers. Yeah. So it is something to consider. Those lights are bright. Aye. Mm. I, I, I they, they are hard to look at. I, I would but be personally, I wouldn't be too worried. From an operator's point of view, I would like as much light as, a, as yeah. I can have. Mm -hmm. I think be going Especially, well. you know, thinking about guys going for a demo that, you know, they're only in the machine. They're not for familiar with the machine, two. yeah. You know, you want to, I suppose, help them as much as And there is dark chopping in this country, like. Oh, no doubt. You know, our, well, nice our weather job. conditions dictate, yeah. dictate everything here, don't they? We have a feature called advanced header control. Um, it's basically, you can have hydraulic tilt on your joystick for your header. Now typically you wouldn't need this on a, on a grass pickup but if you were going with a whole, down whole crop header, maize header, it's that size machine. You need that control. Hmm. And like, she's, she's going to like, have to have it. Likewise on the 30, if we're going for 30R which it sounds like we are, I'd recommend putting that option on it as well. Yeah. 
Cool. That's just where you tap the side button and ch does yeah. this here. Yeah, yeah, you can tilt. And likewise, when you lift it up with the headland, it locks. It's that yeah. hydraulic that will tilt to you. Yeah. She rolls over the roller. Yeah. Is every one of these boxes you're taking adding a lot more money onto this thing? Mm-hmm. Like, give me an example. You talked about ordinary lights versus LED lights. Uh, LED lights. Couple of grand, isn't it? Is that roughly but an, an, an yeah. upgraded package? You you could be up towards a couple of grand just yeah. to get a harvester done. Yeah. <sighs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> See them boys that are telling you it's because they played the drivers. So that's just their way out of the miserable. <laughs> <laughs> They're north of me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so what what's the next box? If you're familiar, like if you've had the header on and off these machines, haven't you? Yeah. So you'll notice your, your PTO drive there down the, the left hand clutch. side. Yeah. yeah, so that is actually an option. So there's a quick coupler there on most of the machines that we sell. But it is an option. If you don't choose that option, you will get a PTO shaft that you <gasps> take off and on. So if you don't take a box that automatically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could it have so, you, can you make a boo boo? Not so much in harvesters, but tractors, yes, it's happened. Numerous uh, times. What's bound it? And like we, we have so many option boxes here. <laughs> and see if you're if you're going through specking There's up no a lot one. of machines, it's easy to become complacent and sort of just glaze over it and yet you, you can miss mm. and it can be something quite critically expensive at times, unfortunately, to the detriment of the dealer. Um Sadly that's where that buck will have to stop. <sighs> On that Absolutely, like you yeah. know, if, if we sell a customer a machine in a certain configuration and we make the mistake of not specifying a certain night and want it, that's our fault, mm. and it has happened. Uh, so we'll click that. So auto what I need to do here is reach over and do a wee bit of unclicking, <laughs> but we've agreed on it, and then <laughs> then get the price, and then say, "You, oh you, boy, you have to stand on. I have recorded video evidence." So <laughs> next box, uh, header drive. So we've got our standard variable header drive, or we've got dual header dual. drive. So maybe Rob, you could elaborate a wee bit more on this. Yeah, well, dual header drive. You know, Gareth. I mean, it's linking our pickup time speed to a forward speed. Yeah. We already have our standard. Um, variable header drive standard, so again, it's linked to our feed rows. So yeah, again, a machine like this, you, you know, typically it's it's is going to help. There, it's a case of you said it already. Guys are out there. Every field's different. Yeah. You know, you're you're flat out down the hill into the hollow, and just once you hit that hollow, it's twice the crop of stuff, That's and right. you're down this. Well, depending on how you drive, but you're flat out down the hill. You're easing her back. You need everything. Mm -hmm. I think the jewel is a good job. It's been there since the eight thousands. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, on, on, on this size machine, it does make sense to have it. To be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is a big selling feature for us. This next option. So you're familiar with the term jewel line. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, and it's, it's an extreme wear coating on certain components of the machine. Um, but we have three levels of it. Components that last 3,000 engine hours Duraline means competitive advantage for your business looking back at more than 10 years of lasting longer. <laughs> Our Duraline liners to last for 3,000 engine hours or here's the catch, five years of use. So what you're telling me is get the full Duraline package here that you will gar guarantee, yeah. guarantee 3,000 engine hours yeah. Or five years. Against where? Against where? Against where? We on, don't those, on those components. and Blades we... out through the side of it don't count. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and, and what are we duralining? Because so this, you... this diagram looks from tip to toe. Yeah, well, pretty and, much. And that's, that's, that's an option. That, that will be your duraline ultimate. So yeah. everything you see that is yellow and green mm -hmm. on there is coated with duraline. Um, or duraline with duraline knives as well. So well for us with Duraline shear bar, which is absolutely phenomenal what it can take. Yeah. You know, we, we had a machine in here with, we, we estimated it cut about 24,000 acres, still on the original shear bar setting. We turned the shear bar at that point. You know, that, that was on a 9.9. I understand, but the way you're talking here, I'm not meaning to be funny. The way you are talking here before we get to the next bit, I feel a wee bit like Donald Duck. The wee dollar signs are rolling about in the eyeballs here. This, this has to cost a yeah, few quid. Yeah, but, but Gareth, at the end of the day, we're reducing your cost potentially. You don't have to think about paying or changing those liners. 
from a wear point of view yeah. for five years. And in reality, you know, depending on the tonnage you're doing, they will probably last longer. Well, in my case, not much tonnage, but yes, I, I, I genuinely have a user. Yeah. That's, that's proven itself. The, as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And definitely, with, when it comes to Duraline, we're confident. We're confident. and So we're going, you're basically a, a Dur Duraline package is mostly, you can get, am I right in saying, the bottom of your shoot tar? Mm -hmm. up round the back of your blower, yep. up to the pivot point of the spout, mm -hmm. and then and then okay. on the end of the on the end of the spout where she all the all, down. all the extreme you wear points, you know, spiral band, uh blower band, yeah. uh your green tar as we call it, the first part of the grass shoot. Yep. Yeah. Can you get your line in your processors? We can now have a new, new option coming for that availability later in the year, all right, yeah. That's, right, that's news to me, actually, as well. Yeah, so. uh, that's the thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, we won't, we won't really have much availability of it going into next year, but we will have a coated roll. So even right down going to your forward. processor, you can get it coated yeah, going um, forward. They won't fall into that wear package or life package, but yeah, we have a, yeah. have that coming now with the premium. Because like those nine eights and nine nines will be... Well, nine nines. Remember now, we're with the extreme KP that goes in those, so it's a different story. But this is in the John Deere mm -hmm. KP, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that process? Am I right in saying, Rob, that dual line process is actually executed in a certain area in the factory? It's it's done outside. It's an external company it? that are doing the yes tungsten carbide coat, and it's baked onto the product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. And so that's an absolute no-brainer to you. Absolute no brainer. Like every machine, it's adding value to the customer. Every machine that we order here through Johnson Gilton's comes with Duraline Ultimate. I the ultimate. Unless the customer has been really, really stingy. Or some guys don't need it because they're not doing the volume of work for a smaller machine. I understand. Yeah, that there you is know? a point. There is a genuine valid there point is, there. Yeah, there if I if I was if I was genuinely buying a machine. You know, to do a wee bit of work, not not yeah. not overly serious about it, wouldn't probably be needing it. But if no. you but if you are going to the country to chop grass, yeah, or a big for, for us here, it's, it's a must option. Like that's especially with me as and 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 on a demo machine as well. You know, where yeah. you've had to crop through a machine. At the end of the day, the person is going to buy that machine. You know, they think, oh well, there's yeah, hundred hours or whatever going to be on it by the end of the demo campaign. They're going to want to know that the liners are going to be okay, and this way. I have four more years of no, you guaranteed protection. Start again. Yeah. It's, it's it's five because oh, it all starts from the, from the warranty. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right. What next, Gavin? Next is the biggie. We've already discussed this about the color head <laughs> the configuration. So how many knives we're we going to put in this oh, bad boy? We decided sixty-four. Sixty-four. I think. Well, it was fifty-six or sixty-four, and you said yeah. sixty-four. Sixty-four would be our. Our go to one. Well, then if it's your go to one, it has to be your. Yeah. If that's what you, if that's what you bring in and sell. Yeah. Then surely you stick with what you know. And Rob, I think you'd agree on a thirteen fifty pulley. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've seen the be they had the benefit of the higher speed pulley again yeah. from once they're up and spinning. So we, we do have the option of the thirteen fifty or eleven hundred eleven seventy RPM pulley. Yeah. Uh, on that cutter head as well, so. Typically, we've always ordered the, the 1350 just for that extra, extra momentum. momentum. So, yeah, now we've hopefully this 18X engine now has enough back up on it to, to keep that momentum going. So, right, keep going, keep talking. Shear bar, I'll close them up. You can spec your shear bar. So, we have a grass shear bar or a corn shear bar. I don't think we've ever sold a corn shear bar here. A set of gra grass knives and a dual line shear bar. Would yep. be appropriate. All agreed. Yep. I want to cut me as well. We can we can still cut me. Still cut me as well. Still cut me as with that shear bar. No problem. No problem. No problem. But if you were going out and out, you know, Robinson spec and America sort of you'd, thing, you'd maybe consider. You'd probably spec a corn shear Aye. bar. Okay. And corn and bit of grass knives. Probably. Yeah, yeah, they're both. Like yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go to chop grass with corn knives, but you could chop corn with grass knives. Yeah, I'm with get you. away with it. So. I'm with you. Yeah. I didn't realise there was as many options. Yeah, we're make, making harvesters for the whole world here. Remember, so got a lot of options. That's it. So, 
Next one then, KP. Our kernel processor options. I think but do you have to order that now? No, you don't have to if order you it now. Like, if you, surely you're taking a chance. If you order that now and a processor's going to be a decent bank, mm -hmm. you'll be wanting to sell that processor with that machine regardless. Yeah. 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 What if some guy just wants it for grass? Yeah, you're left yeah. with it on the shelf for... Yeah. And that, that actually is, it is a bit of a catch-22 here because we, you know, we're so focused on grass here um, because it is like 95% of what we grow and, and harvest here is, is, is grass. You know, perhaps it would be best to order a machine KP ready. So yeah. we can order it with a crane, for example. Uh, but that's smarter. The right pulleys and stuff, so that it's just a matter of setting a KP in. Well, then order it KP. Maybe, maybe we'll order that it, then, yeah. Order it KP ready. Yeah. yeah. You can order KP ready, yeah, it's not a job, so it has the pulleys on it and stuff. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's a decent halfway house. So, yeah. That's a some job, that's it. I tell you. Let me try to order a harvester here. Take these <laughs> boys. I think these boys have just developed this to be... Awkward and long. Next painful. big decision then. Oh, Plenty of chat about You're this. You're the one that makes it painful. We've found a couple that really sort of work for us. Um, but tyres. I mean, I know you love your tyres, guys. I do love tyres. The whole thing when we met Ross and the whole selling point was we can now put 800s on her and keep her at the right width. And she just looked, oh, just nice. Big black tyres with a big black bum. Yeah. It was just lovely. It has to be them. Yeah. 800 Michelin's. I'll not disagree with you actually. Axio bibs. Yeah. I think that, that, that we found out our sort of go-to tire of choice as well. You see pictures of some of the ones with like 900's and that on and they're just mega. Oh. But yeah. they're big. And legally probably too wide for here. Yeah, I mean up to a, a up three and a half we're okay. Like, so we can spec a 900 but again it wouldn't make sense for this part of the world. Yeah. So sure. that's the front tires. Now you have to choose your back tires. Six fifty. Sixty. Six fifty. Sixty. Thirty fours. Right. Please. Bob. Why? Why? Because if I rip one off I've a spare in the front of the three fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think six fifty if you can for the width. Obviously, genuinely, hand on my heart, the conditions in this country, yeah. the wider, the less footprint, everything that you can do, the better. Well, you know, you can you can spec a six twenty seventy five thirty, which is roughly the same footprint as Aye, a six fifty sixty thirty four. Yeah. What are you thinking? Um, I personally like the look of the thirty four, and it is just from from a looks perspective. Okay, we we don't see any difference in performance. We don't see any difference in the steering lock. The turn radius. Well, like that, which is what you're asking so me to do now is cosmetics. Is, what is, you're asking me to do now is tell you what I thought of the look of the front because that's we you, you go back to the three ten. Yeah. Was on the thirty, and then you go to the three fifty, which is in the thirty four, and I just think it has it yeah. for the look. Yeah. No, in I, my opinion. That that would be my choice as well. But what do you? Could think they of? ring you when you hit? Yeah, the, I like those tires. Yeah, as you know, they're 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 good good yeah. tire. They're, Fill the right. wheel arch nicely, they look good. And again, if he, if he has to have a Michelin, it probably makes sense. Did you know looks was, ever, looks uh, are important, did guys. Ever, did you notice when we started talking about tyres, you know, he hasn't asked about the price? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. it's... When it's, so it comes to tyres, yeah. doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, that's what we've learned. <laughs> Budget brands all have a place, very, very important, and we love trying different tyres and doing different things on different tractors for different jobs. But on a premium product like that, that you're wanting the best car end capacity. And we have seen the Axio bibs in action from drone shots looking down. Yeah. And you can, I'm sorry, but you can see the difference. Yeah. When you get to this size and weight and speed of a machine, there's only certain tires made that will actually deal with those those forces. So that's why there's such, such a little choice there. Yeah. So this is a, a, a minor option here, but I think it's important to note that we have to select this. Um, so we've got uh, what we call an early order program. So in other words, the machine will be ordered with a specific code and that code then goes through the factory and they will say, right, this machine needs to be delivered for a certain season. So in this case, um, it's corn or grass. So typically the corn season, so to speak, is a lot later and the grass season is a lot earlier. Yeah. So it enables them to prioritise build slots. build slots in the factory for for 
making these machines. So you just take them all so across. Like, you know, look at Frederick Harvison. I know it's combines. We're all your combines as well. Mm-hmm. But they, they I think have ten, ten or eleven new harvesters coming for wheat. But then they also have six or four or five new ones coming mm-hmm. for the fall that they put into the the, the corn. Yeah. So I suppose that. As, a, as an example of an application where that is actually, uh, yeah. we need one that's ready for early season and then those other ones, because they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll do all the ordering at the same time. For here, it's grass only, as he says, somewhere in East Anglia, yeah. for this ordering yeah. machine, just for maize. So when you wee boy in the office at the back of the factory there that gets that wee process through, sees that box yeah. ticked for after me, he's like, <laughs> yippity do <doo-dah>. that! Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get to see this process for yourself someday, you know, and, and it'll give you a better understanding of, you know, when you see it. If there's one thing I want to see is a complete analysis given to a farmer right. after a specific yeah. job. Right, get to take that. What about when you're sensing the Now he's, he's paying the extra cost for this because this is like PR for him. I, I him. agree there. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, good. What about when you're sensing the thing would spread slurry with harvester? No, but we could spread slurry with. Farmer Garth's tractor. Could get your old mate Garth mu- involved. We could do, yeah. That's multi purpose. Yeah. So we, we do see them popping up, like yeah, you're watching yeah. guys out with their new new just the YouTube guys out doing slurry spreading yeah. with all weird sorts of implements that they've either made yeah. or whatever and you, you see the you're now seeing the John Deere sensor. Yeah. Very very commonly. Have the farmer being the salesman. Telling the, telling the contractors, I love the way that they were able to do that or whatever, that's a good job. Ah, that has to help. Yeah, oh, definitely. It definitely does. That, you know, there, there's so many features, selling features for us. There's so many pluses to selling this. Like, there's another one, mate, you kind of touched on it there without knowing, but you know, you can physically take this harvest lab to a farm, to a silo. I know. You can set it on what we call the turntable or set the turntable I have it. watched videos. And, and actually sample silage from a silo pit. You know, so that's another use for this. Mm. Um, I think this will get to a place where, through time, where farmers will have this sensor. And they'll have it for maybe their slurry application if they're doing slurry themselves. And it could get to the point where, you know, the guy when the guy that comes in to cut the har do the harvest or whatever, if he doesn't have it, they could, they'll pop their own in for the day or whatever way it works. It makes perfect sense. Look at soil management, look at soil pH. The average farm in Northern Ireland used to be uh, an average pH of like five point, between 5.2 and 5.5 5 or something like that there. It was quite low. And you go into your Antrim area and your north, on up towards North Antrim, it's absolutely loaded with magnesium, like a five plus in the index. You're logging out so much of the goodness and that, like I mean, at a pH of 5.5, something ridiculous, like half of your phosphorus could be locked out, half all of these nutrients. Yeah. Half of these things are locked out, your soil being able to pull them through. That's right. So like, you're going out there with all this fancy stuff, but whenever you, you guys work on their soil management and then they're told by you know, agronomists or whatever exactly how much phosphorus to put on, Okay, they can work and use the sensor to hit certain targets of what they need and what they're low on, and yeah. I think that's an absolute no-brainer. Yeah, it's, t- it's targeted right, isn't it? You know, you're putting it where it needs to be and, and getting the use out of it. Walk away from all of that, a complete separate thing, but the price of the stuff. Yeah, that's it. We talk about the price of your sensor, your price of all of this, but the price. Stuff from, compared to the price of fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, right, have we this harvester bought yet? I suppose you want a leather steering wheel. Oh, huh. Yeah. Would a cat drink milk? Yeah. Rear view camera. It's a must, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Additional curb mirror. Aye. You need that one for the traffic islands. Aye. Um, so we're back to lighting again. So we can have a service lighting package. So whenever you open, open up, up your the side panels and then we put your KP in, um, there's lighting in there. So we can have that as halogen or LED. Do we want that? Do we need that? I think probably halogen is sufficient for that. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it is. Yeah. LED is probably overkill for in there, really, yeah. isn't it? All right. So the guys in the workshop might disagree, but yeah. Well, sure, they can carry their own head torch. 
This is 605,000 so far. Oh, <coughs> List. Minus. <laughs> what about a fridge? Oh, you, you like the old oh, cold I, chocolate bar, oh, do you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And that needs to be cool in there. Yeah. It's a proper big fridge, like, isn't it? Like yeah, proper cold fridge, yeah. yeah. A new yeah. option that we have for this year, um, which is welcome to it's only it's a very silly thing like but um due to homologation we haven't been able to have it till now as, as foot pegs like you'll be familiar with them on mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. american mm-hmm. machines do you know why that is Gavin? i don't actually but you're going to tell me i, I do know why that is exactly. they're not just as long as, as the, the american ones. ones because the whole thing was if your foot slipped off the pedal or whatever you'd be straight on the brake mm. so they're now a little bit shorter this is a new option here, Rob. Um, we can select them without a cab door on the right hand side. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So we can now do them, say we all know the Forgers have always had two doors, haven't they? You know, mm-hmm. one on the left before you get in and out and, and the right hand one is open. So we do now do an option of having that right hand one fixed. So that's the way the combine cabs are. Just believe it or not, there's no right hand door in a combine cab. So we now just offer that that uh, that option in, in the forage harvester. I didn't think ordering a harvester was as big a job. This, my laptop seems to think it's a big job because it's just out of freak. I think it's the price that I'm seeing rope down the side there. <laughs> Surely that's with the header added on. No, additive system. So we've got high volume, low volume. So we've got two tanks. We have a 300 and we have found not that's not really such an issue going for high volume or low volume application. It's getting the boys switched over from the old powder candy boxes as such. <laughs> Because we, believe it or not, we, do, we we have machines there with everything on them. Every type of applicator. There's powder, there's a liquid standalone applicator on it, plus the, the fact that, that system. That's because... They're, they're accommodating different customers and they're, they're able to do it. But that's because the company selling it, and I saw lots of additive in my time. The companies don't make a liquid version and it's only a powder. So then the companies that are selling that product are then their salesmen are convincing the farmer that powder's better and all of this, so that they have to have it. And then in order to do the job, which is absolutely, I guess, that the, it's not better. So we hate the sight of it. I, but pow- Our pow- boys hate working right Powder <laughs> on to dry, real dry grass is actually, it's, it's crazily stupid. Mm. But you can't take away, if the guy is investing a lot of money in that, and I can understand. Because he wants to buy off your man who only sells it that way. Air compressor? Every time. What about an air horn? <laughs> Do you like that factory would a fit? Cat, would a cat drink milk? <laughs> Metal <laughs> button, joystick, honk honk, that's what we're after. Don't bother. We um, want to wake the tailor men up when they fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got we've a new one. We've, yeah, we've a, new. a new option, we've had this option this year already, um, but it's for a spiral upper front feed roller. So if you remember back to our Six seven thousand machines. We had that spiral aggressive feed roller setup. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't had that on our eight thousand and nine thousands yeah, until this was, year. That was a mistake. Well, Robin you know, Johannes touched on this with me. I think when we were looking at the eight thousand mm-hmm. series, that they were telling me yeah. you were telling us that it's coming back, which is going to work better here. Yeah, it's more aggressive. It's self cleaning to a certain extent as well. You know, yeah. so it's some people have been asking for it. It's not going to be for everyone, but typically for it's our conditions in Ireland, that's, I see what we're it's going to say. It's heavy, heavy grass, isn't it? That, that's, yeah. that's primarily what it's for. So yeah. we'll, we'll definitely take that. Um, that's the upper feed roller. Sto- yeah. Stone detector, do you think that we should spec that? It's no I, I think it's a no-brainer. It's a standard, it's standard it's a hair, like, you know, Absolute no-brainer. If this thing comes to us for a day, we could bend around stone walls. Like. We could. That's the truth, but we could. Automatic spout positioning. Pro touch. You've used Pro Touch. Yeah. APA. It's a nice feature. Aye. Yeah. We'll click it. It's it's good good feature to that demo. Spout camera. Everybody specs it, but honestly, I still look out the window at the trailers. But it's nice to be able to glance maybe at it. On a, maybe on the yeah. demo machine it's a good thing, but like by the same time, I won't be too stressed because you could, you could buy all sorts of different cameras. What I want to see is a camera on the spout that links to the tractors. That when you pull in alongside, going forward, That's that you pick up on that camera feed because as trailers are getting bigger, it gives you the opportunity and it keeps you sitting focused on. I think that would be neat. The technology's there, then then opens up another 
can of worms or question that whose job was it to fill the trailer and we're, we're not <laughs> going to get into that now and what side did they go to <laughs> uh, left hand side trailer man well we're all left hand right. side so we're like trailer man should fill his own load within fine. reason agreed i agree too let's go hydraulic service in the back i think it's one of those options we probably have to take yeah, look, we want to fit a hitch going forward, it's, things like that. It's, it's, it's pretty involved to retrofit, we, yeah. we know firsthand. So, yeah. And our very last option then, um, <laughs> we're ready for the, the big bottom, price. The bottom of the list here is chrome exhaust. Do we want a chrome exhaust? Of course we do. That's us done. 626,000. Much as the pickup head. I'll give you a wee bit of discount off that. But we're getting the 30 hour, like we're, I'm, I'm hunting his back down here. Oh, you want to pick up for it as well? Uh, All right. Okay. Pick up your ass. 30 hour head, honestly, because I've watched it with Big Jimmy last year and I loved every bit of it. Save I've, this as Garth's next purchase. Ruth's okay. next purchase. All right. Okay. Okay, right, right. Ruth, you're funding this one, the looks of things. Ruth. This is Ruth's Ruth next big purchase, because it is a big purchase. Mm. But don't worry, Ruth. Uh, We'll be behind you all the way. At this point, you could you could actually select a, a grass pickup and a maze header if you want. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, but we're just going with the 30R. We're going to go with 30R pickup. So, Six rows of tines, fixed auger, no chains, gearbox driven. Uh, we need to pick automatic PDO coupler because we selected yeah, that boy. one mm -hmm. on the machine. And we need dual header drive on the pickup yep. to match the, the machine. Because so. it's on the machine. Your only option here really to discuss is your, your gauge wheels. So we have gauge wheels at the side, but we can also have central wheel, central wheel there in the, in the middle, which is to, to an agnomatic instead of, I think it's a must for our ground yeah, conditions. for our ground conditions, it's a no-brainer. So and that is it. It's 97, 18 litre engine, middle of the road seat. Yeah, premium seat. Which is yeah. premium seat, which is yeah. one step back from the leather seat. But yeah. the leather seat could be sticky in certain situations. Electric mirrors. Radio, new hydro handle. Ah, oh, that's right, we don't have that option yet. No, we new, don't. Sure, new, we don't, Garth. New, new, new camp. Uh, what else can you remember? Have. It's something our customers uh, I remember I was really, told really to go like, to Agritechnic yeah, this year. What else can you remember? <laughs> Next year. So, <laughs> so, so um, 64 knife drum, which is the first big thing. Yeah. And that was a choice based on you, on your conditions, and who you sell them to. Yeah. Whilst you're, you're aware that a lot of 49 drums are sold as well, you, you mm -hmm. like 64, mm -hmm. which covers all those bases. Harvest Lab is an absolute must. Mm -hmm. That's me fought for that one. Yeah. It was an easy fight for this, was, this yeah. time. Yeah. Because you're, 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 you're pushing the door, you're pushing through an open door. Uh, so well, you want, you want to promote yeah. And that's part of your job now, too, Rob, yep. with all, with with you know, respect. Yep. You were telling me that. So, 800 tyres, premium lights, big screen. All of that talking, and it took us literally, I understand, we, we, this is an edited video, but we went through all of that there, a, a solid R plus, and you know, to cut that right down into, that's what we're talking. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is quite involved. Well, there's a lot, of, the there's, process, there's a lot yeah. of options there yeah. with the new yeah. 30R header, yeah. which is essential because at 825 horsepower, yeah. deal done. Yeah. What happens now? We'll review what we've just spec'd out. We'll send that to our ordering system with a, with our own order number which is all online that then will trigger a whole series of alerts within, within <laughs> these silly agents within, within the, the, <laughs> the John Deere fraternity and let's burn a bottle of um, machine <laughs> but, but ultimately they, that'll, that'll go to um, somebody well Rob you're better qualified to yeah so it'll go to our order fulfillment this. department and it'll get yeah. what we call sourced so again they'll put that machine give it a bill slot the factory guys then, they'll get the list of everything and that'll then start all the ordering process for them to order all the components and, and make sure they have everything in the right place at the right time so that the, the right engine meets the right chassis, the right cab meets it and all the other components down to the harvest lab, down to the wheels and tires. So everything meets it at the right point in time during the whole assembly process. So it's a huge chain of logistics yeah. Yeah. behind it, any so, machine. So once you hit that button, that goes then basically to his way broken. Yeah, effectively, yeah. 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 And then yeah. They, they take it in-house there and sort it all out at the factory. What if, I, what if you woke up in the middle of the night with cold sweats next week? I should have ordered that... Um, KP. KP yeah. ready. And you were like... 
or maybe can we, you change that? Yeah, we we can to a point. So it's um, what's the point I mean? Once we go and order the machine, it it gains a certain status. Okay, so we it will go to I think a blank status first of all. So yeah. we have we have the order in. John Deere then within the next few days will accept the order, and that order will. Uh, change check that your credit, credit you mean? <laughs> check your account. They 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 change that to confirmed order. Okay. okay. So they they have then accepted that order. They've accept they've agreed to build that machine for us. For a period of time, it will remain in that status, and we will have some sort of idea of when that machine is going to be built. Once it gets to a certain time frame before that happens, it will change to a frozen state. But in that period of time where it sits in confirmed status, we can change certain components of the machine. In fact, we could change everything, a lot. everything but the model, yeah. pretty much, uh, to, to that point. So like, say we wanted to pull the auto track out or add a KP in or change the tire sizes or, you know. But when it's frozen, it's frozen. Correct. We can yeah. change all that to, yeah. to that Because at that, at that yeah. point, we've, lo we've locked Stuff's the order. Stuff's there. We've lo well, no, no, we've locked the order in and they're, they're the next step is happening, so going to organise the stuff, as you say. This is Ruth's machine, I'm going to call it now, because mm -hmm. she's going to organise the time. She's, she's coughing she's, up the <laughs> So when will, when will, uh, she'll hit the, you could literally hit the enter button, that goes there, when, and it'll get made then in a few months' time, pull on a few strings. Come and see, and it, the actual one. We've been to the factory, we've yeah. walked the line, we've made videos there yeah, for the 50 years. If this is as accurate as you say it is, then there's a time and a date yeah. that that particular machine will run through that line. Yeah. There's, no, there's no chance of getting that sort of... It'll take a lot of string pulling. Mm. Why? No. Just to get to get everything lined up so we're there at the right, right, right time. Are you, and any, are you any idea how tight John Deere are with this sort of thing? Production. Hold on a wee minute here. Now stop. I have to stop. He's there now in your tracks. I have done nothing but promote with good intention. There's nobody can deny that. The John Deere brand. And I have respectfully went through the factories in the past mm. and been very well behaved. As much as I didn't want to be well behaved. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to deny that the, 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 you know, and I got to put the cab on the 6R and stuff. So like, I just think, I'd I would love to see the process, the specific machine, the one that somewhere along the line, I hopefully get my bum inside and go, I actually seen You've been born. Could yeah. you make it happen, do you think, Rob? Well, look, I say, at this stage, let's not promise anything, but let's uh, pull some strings and uh, see what we can organise. And... But I have one special request. <laughs> I don't want him there. He'll end up having it sold to me before we're home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's fine. We, we, could, we can do that. See if you can make that happen. I would go with a heart and a half. Yeah, I'd okay. love to see that. I understand, maybe, for all of our guys watching, it's just another machine getting made. But I mean this specific one. Let, let's create history behind this particular machine. Yeah, look at the whole process from start to finish. It would be a nice, nice project. My name would have been nice or no? I'll tell you what, we'll make, I'll make sure there's a few Libras lying around for you to look at. Too. I think when Ruth finds out the price, you, you'll have to do a lot of smooth talking to her to bring her <laughs> around, boys. Don't worry about the price. <laughs> I'll make it attractive. We'll get our uh, <laughs> colleagues in John Deere Finance involved and it won't be an issue. I'll Here, in fairness, they're a class to work with. We could do a, I could do a complete separate video on how easy they are to work with. <laughs> That's the truth. It is. They're, they're good. Uh, 350 and yeah. the 310 and the 350, I've, I've, I've no, no secret about it. I've needed finance and it's just, I don't even know. It's like, I don't even, you don't even realise you bought a thing. <laughs> so that's it, ordered basically. Job We're done. done. Nine seven eight hundred. Yeah. Thirty R. I'll email you a copy of that if you want. Aye. Run through. Or email the Ruth, will we? Mm. Oh, easy now. Well, she sees that last price at the bottom, but she <laughs> might change her mind. <laughs> Thank you very much, boys. It's, it's, it's great to have an insight into that. And can I keep these two brochures? You certainly can. They're certainly. updated. And the way I would order it to the camera is, if they don't let us see it getting made around the factory, it almost looks like there's something to hide. No pressure then, is that what you're saying? I'm not trying to bully the machine for free grass cutting because I'm just thinking of HQ with Farmer Garth, if we could cut either the first or second cut of it there to really take our time around this piece. Well, I think we could do up in there, Robin, doing a bit, bit. on, yeah. 
Yeah, you know, and, and likewise, in fairness, like the guys here of Matthew as well, solely on precision as well. And I'd like to do things. if the weather's if the weather's kind, you know, use it as a wee bit of an opportunity to get some of our staff up and with you or something and let you know. Hold on a second here. You're <laughs> organising all this here, and like at Cooper Risk Machine, so. You know, it might be this call who gets to drive it and who sits in it and who does what with it, so... Well, Ruth is the boss, there's no doubt about that. But anyway, thank you, boys. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time and showing me and a little bit to our fans as to what is actually and what honest. I just thought you should send me a harvester, like... <laughs> right, nope. job done. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth.